Welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. Today I'm restoring these two Estabrook SJ celluloid fountain pens. These do not belong to me, but belong to pen friend Janice. She bought them at a local antique store and promptly put them in my hands. She gave me permission to have a bash at fixing them because they were in pretty rough shape. Now first off, here's my disclaimer. I don't restore pens for people, I restore my own pens as a hobby. If you want your vintage fountain pen restored, send it to a professional. But I'm doing this as a favor to my friend Janice, who has been very generous and supportive of me and my channel. The good news is, these are pretty simple pens to restore, at least to replace the ink sacs. The nibs were another story. So, let's get at it and show you these wonderful little celluloid beauties right now. <music> And here are Janice's two Estabrook SJ celluloid pens. These pens are from the mid-1940s. The Estabrook SJ pens were just like the standard size J pens, but shorter and slimmer. I replaced the sacks on both of them and repaired both nibs. I should have done more extensive before photos, but especially for this blue one. But I really didn't have any hope that I would get it to write at all. I just purchased this nib repair block and thought I'd practice on Janice's pen. After I got permission, of course. I used this blue Estabrook SJ in a size comparison for a recent review. So here's a screenshot from that video that shows how this nib was more like a fish hook than a fountain pen nib. It had obviously been dropped on its head and the tines were bent about 15 degrees to the side. I took this nib repair block and this plastic spudger from an iPhone repair kit and persuaded the tines back into shape. Once I had the nib in good shape, I replaced the sack and found the pen wrote perfectly. So I tackled the green one too. I assumed that the green one would be easier to fix than the blue one as the nib wasn't bent and the pen looked like it just needed a sack. Both pens had sections that came right off with no issues at all, no heat was needed. And neither pen had a sack inside, so someone had obviously opened them and removed the old desiccated sack. Well, I should have inspected the green one a little more closely, because not only was the nib in need of a lot more attention than I expected, the section was completely misshapen. It looked like someone had used a lot of heat on it, and it was shaped more like the cylinder of a Mazda Wankel rotary engine. You'll see as I filmed the replacement of the sack and the repair of the nib and the section. Let's look at that video now. I saw a tip on a YouTube channel recently uh, where if you don't have one of these sack spreaders, you can use a paper clip, a large paper clip, and fit it inside there and uh, fit that over the section and then pull the paper clip out. And that was quite an interesting solution. Make sure that's straight. And we'll let that dry. So I put the put that nib back in the section and then heated it to get it to be a little bit pliable. I sort of pressed it around that nib unit and feed to get it to be a little bit more round shape. It's improved from what it was. Now we're going to take some Autosol metal polished liquid, uh, which is the Canadian equivalent of semi-chrome and we're going to polish up that stainless steel nib i would ordinarily want to do this with the nib off i couldn't find a way to get that nib off that feed without destroying the pen so we make do with what we can do not too bad a little bit of corrosion there Pretty good actually. And we'll rinse that thoroughly before I put the sack on it. I'm going to put the sack in the green barrel and mark it for length. I'll snip that off and get our section and nib fresh out of the ultrasonic bath. Uh, that might be a little bit long. 
Yeah, that's probably going to do it better. Yeah, that's just about right. There we go. Twist it around a little bit. Make sure it's straight. And then put a little bit more. Just pushed it a little bit more so there's no gap there. And we'll let that one dry. And now we're going to put the sections back in the barrels. Which one's which? This one is the blue one. And this one is the green one. Okay. I'm going to talc these sacks to make sure they don't bind. And that is genuine, pure talc. Make sure you don't use cocaine because that's very expensive. And you might get it up your nose. So, find the proper orientation here. And the green one goes in. And these are just friction fit. So I'm just going to push them in there. And we're not going to put any shellac on that section. There we go. Make sure it's seated tightly. Of course, this one still has an odd shape because of that melted section. It kind of doesn't point straight. But that should be okay. Now all we have to do is ink them up and give them a try. Okay, let's try the first one. This is an this is an Esterbrook. J. This needs a lot more work. It's very, very scratchy. This is the nib that I fixed and I got those tines straightened but I think they need more alignment and more smoothing so this is the blue one let's try this one this is the one that the wonky section and this is an Esterbrook J it's the green one and oh boy I haven't done anything to this nib but it needs a lot of work feels like there's no tipping material on there at all yeah I didn't inspect this one carefully but I don't know whether you can see this or not it is a an oblique there is no tipping material on there so it's like an oblique italic so it's not surprising that it is very scratchy so I'm going to work on both nibs before I do the review and see if I can get them writing better I went right back to the beginning um, and started with both pens this one needed less work than the green one uh, but I went right back to 3200 grit and moved all the way up to 12,000 grit micro mesh and worked on both pens for about a half an hour each. Here is the blue Esterbrook J and it has what I would call a fine nib, fine steel, and it's now nicely wet. and behaving well there we go again they're fairly stiff not much line variation and not much tipping material at that so that's the blue one and here's the green one this one took a lot of time and this is the Esterbrook J and this one has what I would call an extra fine 
steel nib and it's a little bit watery right now because it's still it's a little bit dry too but the ink is still a little bit watery from me putting water on my micro mesh pads and scrubbing it so this is a lot better i couldn't write with this at all but now it is relatively smooth there's some feedback to it but i can actually write with it where before it was just tearing up the page so i would say success on both of those nibs now let's look at the parts and features of these pens other than the nibs and the color the pens are identical overall the pens are small and slender measuring only 120 millimeters capped with a 10.5 millimeter barrel diameter the standard Esterbrook J is 5 inches or 128 millimeters in length and one half inch thick or 12.5 millimeters thick they both have plastic top and bottom finials and lovely striped celluloid bodies and caps from the top we see a black plastic finial which is a very soft plastic and hence there are a lot of scars from years of use on both pens the clip is fairly stiff and has Esterbrook printed down the length the cap tapers up and then is straight for its length to a chrome grooved cap band the barrel is straight to almost the end where it begins to taper down to the matching black finial on the bottom and of course it's a lever filler the cap unscrews with one and about a half turn to reveal the black plastic section and Esterbrook steel on this blue one it's a 9556 nib the 9556 nib is classified by Esterbrook as quote firm fine good for general writing the green Esterbrook SJ has the 1550 nib which Esterbrook says is a quote firm extra fine for accounting and bookkeeping it also doesn't have any tipping material something I didn't know to begin with I actually had assumed this was an oblique because of the angle on that nib but it's more likely the steel has been worn down to this angle from use and the section is very small indeed I tend to write with it holding the barrel and the nib and the ebonite feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews for replacement this one unscrewed rather easily but this one did not you can see I've got it almost back to a circle but you can see it's a bit warped and so that nib unit was very difficult to remove from there because of the misshapen section inside of the cap there's a plastic cap liner uh, to seal the nib the cap posts not very deeply but very securely and it brings the pen into a more normal size as it's almost too short to write with unposted but when it's posted and grabbing the barrel rather than the section it's actually a fairly comfortable pen now let's look at some size comparisons and here is the Esterbrook SJ with a vintage Schaefer balance a vintage Waterman Starlet or Stalwart I'm not sure which a vintage Eversharp Skyline and the world famous vintage Ligue the Ligue you have to pronounce it with the French accent Ligue is proof that clones existed back in the 1930s and 40s I've replaced the nib on this one with a genuine Parker dual fold 14 karat gold nib you'll be seeing this pen in a future pen resurrection Sunday now let's look at them posted and here they are posted they're all rather small pens so it's good that they all post fairly well the Schaefer the Waterman and the Ligue have not been restored yet I attempted to restore the skyline but it broke into a million pieces I will show you that video very soon a number of people wanted to see it even though it's a failure uh, wanted to see that video so I will be posting that soon and these are all 14 karat gold nibs with the exception of the Esterbrook which is steel now let's look at them unposted and here they are unposted the Waterman nib doesn't generally stick out that far I've only put it in slightly because I knocked it out of that section and didn't want to push it all the way back in again until it's restored now let's look at some measurements and i'll be back with some writing samples and we're back with the writing portion of the review this is claire fontaine 90 gsm paper and let's do the blue one first this is the Esterbrook SJ and it has an extra fine 
Now this one has a fine steel nib. It's hard to tell the sizes of these nibs. I've measured the feed on this and it's just under six millimeters. So would it be a number six? I'm not sure. And let's check the wetness. See, it's decently wet. And keep in mind, this nib did not write at all. And it was curled up like a fish hook. And now there's some good feedback, but it is smooth. And it is wet. And the ink, of course, is Waterman's Serenity Blue. And as to line variation, you can actually push a little bit of line variation out of here. It's not what you consider a vintage flex nib at all. It's fairly stiff. It's definitely a firm fine. And the pen makes a 0.4 millimeter line, which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine on my Richard Binder line width chart, which you can find linked in the description. And here is the green Esterbrook. SJ and it has a an extra fine steel nib and this one measured more at the five millimeter range so the 1000 series is a smaller nib than the 9000 series and you can see that this is a little bit drier has a good amount of feedback and is still fairly scratchy in numbers of directions there is a little bit of line flex you can press out of it like the other one, but again, it's stiff steel. And the line this one makes is a 0.3 millimeters, which makes it a Western extra, extra fine, or a Japanese extra fine. And let's do some reverse writing. This is very scratchy. Yeah, I, I can't use that. I might be able to polish that out, but that's very thin, very scratchy. Try reverse with the blue one. Not too bad. Or a lot more scratch, but it's not tearing up the page. Very thin and a lot drier. And some quick writing. No issues with that one. Yeah, the feet. Whoops. I'm way off the screen. Huh. So, yeah, there, I'll let you see that. The reverse is very scratchy on the green one. It's actually doable on the blue one and the this is the blue right here but and that's the green but neither of them have any uh, feed issues at all well this was a very interesting resurrection indeed I got a chance to try out repairing a nib and it worked better than I had expected the unexpected was that the pen I initially thought was in good shape the green one took the most work and the one I thought that was probably not going to live again, the blue one, works great now. Thanks go out to Janice for allowing me to experiment with her vintage pens. And there you have it. Please join me next week on Pen Resurrection Sunday when I will be attempting to resurrect this 1930s Schaefer Balance in this gorgeous red striped celluloid. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens as I'm now an affiliate of the online store. And when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say thank you. And that's all she wrote. I made this. <laughs>